I just sawed through one of the brake lines and this battery is completely dead. I'm wearing rubber gloves just in case. We're moving! Huh? <laughs> I just got a message from Joe who's saying that I should drop the van all the way down and see how low the batteries are to the floor once the suspension kind of goes in to see if there's enough room. I feel like this is pretty late in the day to check this. I guess the worst case scenario, we have to somehow raise the suspension, which could be a whole nother ordeal, but I'm hoping the clearance is gonna be okay. Well, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but it, nothing's touching and it doesn't seem crazy low. Have a little look. Yeah, I mean, it's low. But, I mean, I could just be careful not, not going off-road or anything and going slowly over speed bumps. Yeah, I've had a good idea, guys. So, Jay, who said I need to find a way of mounting these chargers, which are what I plug into the mains or big battery chargers to charge the batteries, to mount them on this battery box. So I've been trying to figure out how to do it. This is a controller which is gonna sit on top of the motor. There's not a lot of room here, so I've got to clear this. So, this big hole here, this is the, I guess, the engine access kind of flap that used to be, you wanted to get into the engine from up here. So my idea is we mount these on the engine access flap and then just bolt them in here. Then it'll just slot on the top there and the chargers will be just be hanging here. Be pretty cool, right? They fit so well. And I guess I could mount two more up here, maybe. That's great. Whoa, oh, that is amazing. Isn't that great? Yes. That's way better than I expected. Oh man, you can put two more up there if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, just bolt them through. All right, next project is, this is gonna mount in here, and then I'm gonna be able to open the, what used to be the petrol, flap and then plug my charger in. I think I've done it guys. Check it out. I just need to unscrew this so we can put the cable in but it's pretty good. I like that. Jehu just sent me this as a schematic for wiring in the contactor box. Hmm. Uh, right. Not quite sure where to start with this. This is all a bit of a puzzle trying to fit everything in. I need to mount this on the back, I'm trying to utilize as much space as possible, and then that's going to mount onto a bracket inside there. There's a lot of uh, attaching cables today. That's basically the main job for the rest of the build, is just connecting all the cables together. So you, you already have an idea of where it's gonna go. I wish it was this one. That's the little thing that you... Oh yeah, okay. That's the thing that we put in there. That's the little one, yeah. I always like to put a sleeving here, right? So that, so that you don't have exposed cables like that. Otherwise you get this, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah, you just find a thing to put that in there, and then that goes underneath here, and then from here just start pulling cables where they go. This is the cable, this is the connector. This is how I'm gonna get all my power. Yeah. 
Okay, I have climbed up into the cab of the van. We're still kind of high up in the air. What I need to do is figure out somewhere to mount this display. So this is gonna tell me the percentage of battery I have left when I'm driving. A little bit like a fuel tank gauge. This one looks spare, but it doesn't kind of properly fit. That could be cool. The other thing I'm thinking is I could just drill a hole here and have it mounted in there. The other option is like, Maybe building a little box and mounting up here or here or something, which seems like a lot of effort. Get rid of the air vent. Maybe I should kind of look here and see how easy that is to get to. It looks like a mission. Oh, well, I'm trapped. I'm still undecided. nice it protrudes a bit but um, I think that's more accessible than being like in here because when you're driving if you want to check anything it's super dangerous to stick your fingers through the steering wheel because you have to turn suddenly I mean that does more look more aesthetically 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 I'm tired <laughs> does look more aesthetically pleasing 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 that does look more aesthetically pleasing but this is more practical and I don't mind that it sticks out. I have measured out the back where I need to mount this and I've drawn out the measured area that we need onto this cardboard. It's not quite right. There's some bits I need to cut still, but I'm gonna put this in place and see if it works and then I can use this to trace onto the metal before I cut it. It's exactly the right size. I just need to cut these little back edges. But yeah, it's a perfect fit. And then I need to figure out whether the motor is gonna sit under this or whether this needs to come up a little bit or cut this middle section out. And then I've bought some metal rails to use as kind of a frame for it to sit on. So I'm gonna have these across here and bracketed on either side just to hold weight in the middle. I'm gonna put the motor in place just to measure out for the shelf that I'm building. Um, I'm not installing it properly, I'm just gonna put it in, but this is gonna be the first time the motor's going in and I'm super excited. Okay, we have a bit of a problem. Um, there's this little O-ring that needs to be pressed into the flywheel, which then attaches to the motor before we can install it. And it's already like 7 p.m. on a Friday night and I have to get this done, so I'm going out to see if there's a press we can use without having to buy one. Okay, I needed this part pressed, but these machines are like a thousand dollars and we didn't have one. So I just came in and tested, tested the machine in the store and we've got our part pressed which is pretty good. Thanks, Harbour Freight. <laughs> down the middle so it was easier to slide it in and out because if not we would have had to put this in first and then kind of shimmy it up and put the motor underneath but I think that's going to save me trouble in the future. I think the plan now is we are going to try and mount the motor which is going to be fun getting this in. So we are just putting some of the things on the motor which we need to connect in with the transmission on the van and this is the coupler needs to be heated up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit and then put in place and then it contracts really, really tight. So we've been heating this. This is a thermal camera, like something you can connect in with your iPhone, but basically, check this out. So you can see where the heat is and it tells you the temperature. It gives you like a temperature readout. Oh, I see. It, it readjusts itself what those colors are and the super bright ones are 626 degrees. Is it hot? Ah, there you go. <laughs> Piece of cake. So quick. Did you feel the heat? No. 
Now this are wow, that was willing gloves. That was fast. Yeah. And that's, that, that's what that color was. See nice. how much clearance we have? Yeah. Between that edge and that, it's like right there. Wow. Just to put these washes on as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. No. Shit. Bad news. We were moments away from mounting the motor, and I got a little bit excited with the impact drill and break one of the bolts. This bolt is now broken off in whatever the flywheel attaches into so I'm gonna have to get there's a special tool that you can put in to take broken bolts out. I'm gonna have to get one of those in the morning. It's been a very frustrating morning. I've been driving to multiple Home Depots and Lowe's and car auto zones and everything to try and get these little bolts I need for the radiator but they're super specialist so can't get them but I have had my first triumph of today basically you know that bolt that I snapped off I've managed to put in a bolt extractor so it's like a special tapered drill bit and then watch this so I pull this out now there she is <laughs> Wow. Okay, so I'm ready to put a fresh bolt in. And then hopefully push the motor into place. this frame for the radiator so these are the the rods that go across and then I've just put these cardboard cutouts of the shelf in place so if I slide those off quickly you can have a look at the frame these will be made out of metal momentarily these are nice and snug hopefully the, the dimensions are kind of perfect so there you go there is the frame I just need to mount another fan in there oh it's looking so good and then got the on off switch for all of the, oh, I need to bolt that in still, but that will isolate the batteries and then control box in there. Okay, I'm now installing this DIN rail, which these fuses clip onto, and that's gonna complete the connector box. I'm just gonna screw this on there. And then this 12 volt charger is gonna go on the back and that's gonna charge my 12 volt battery, which will power like the lights and my sound system stuff. I have traced out these two halves of the shelf from the cardboard onto the aluminium sheet and now I'm going to cut this and hopefully it will just slot straight in. I might have to do a few jigsaw bits but we'll see. This is, this is mainly for straight cuts so definitely one here and here. We'll see how we get on with those ones. Looking good, looking good. 
good. Still looking pretty good. It doesn't quite fit. I'm going to cut this edge here. That's it, baby. Oh, that is clean. I am stopping for the night. I'm pretty happy with the progress. Basically, we've got to the point now where the only things left to do is wire everything and everything else is ready. There's a few more screws to put in. Oh yeah, and once the cables are all connected, I'm gonna screw the bottom of the boxes on, but this is ready to roll now. We have the main on off switch, the connector box, the reservoir for the radiator, which is here. And we're gonna have some uh, cooling fluid run underneath into this and also into these two pipes on the control box, got the motor in, and then the two chargers. This is pretty amazing. I think what's most amazing about this is I'd learned all of this in the last couple of months. Like I've had literally no idea. Some very basic electronics knowledge, but I've just, yeah, been learning a lot. Really dived in the deep end with this project and I'm, I'm really proud. I think this is like probably one of my proudest achievements building this van. I mean, it's so outside of my skill set. Oh, so close now. Right, I've just spent the last few hours making this, which is the in-port for charging. And because we're gonna have to select a different amount of chargers, depending on the power that we're putting in, Jay, who had the idea of fitting these buttons, so. Uh, I had to completely redesign what I initially had and shown you guys, which was very simple mount. It then got super complicated, but it's all done now and it's bracketed on. And now I just need to wire all these in. This is the diagram that Jay has drawn me on a piece of paper towel for the four switches at the top. They each go to a relay, which we've had to get another box for. And then those relays go to the chargers. This is our little relay box and this is this is what the relays look like. These are gonna glow blue when they're on. And now I am soldering the cables. I'm following that diagram that JD gave me, wherever that is. I've just soldered on these four white wires, which are gonna to go to the relays. I've got to do the red wires coming off here. Yeah, it's gonna be soldering all day. I've been trying to find the, the most efficient fastest way to solder. And then I'm using this heat gun as I did before to get the shrink wrapping over the joints so it's all protected. Yeah, I'm gonna feed this through and start running these cables where they need to go. I've protected them all with this shielding. Yeah, I think we can bolt this into position now, I guess which is pretty cool. I'm setting up another little workstation here under the bus so I can do soldering and stuff here because now I kind of need to do it in position. I don't have the luxury of doing it over there on the table. This is pretty complicated for me. I'm, I'm figuring it out. I keep texting Jehu because he's home right now, asking him advice, but I feel like I'm bothering him. <laughs> So I've stripped, soldered, and insulated the wires. Now, I have just given a bit of thought to this diagram that Jehu has drawn. He's shown three chargers here. I actually only have two chargers, but I can get more chargers, and I definitely think I will. It will basically just speed up how fast I can charge, depending on where I'm charging from. But I am wiring this in to make it easy for me to add chargers because if I separate each individual cable and, and insulate them, it's just gonna be more of a pain to have to start stripping and cutting wires when I add another charger. So that's the plan. I'm gonna try and future-proof this installation so I can easily add maybe two more chargers. The relays have been mounted and I've just bunched up the wires in there in that box. And then somewhere, this is just gonna slot over the top there and neaten it all up and just weatherproof that. And these relays 
are taking a 12 volt input from the little switches I've got mounted up here. These little switches. And then what relays do is they take the, the lower voltage and they activate the higher voltage current. So where your switching is not running like a high voltage, like 110 or 240 volts. Jehu said I should run a 12 volt supply and just check the relays are actually working. So that's what I'm gonna try now. I think now if I press these. Oh, it worked. I don't know if you could hear that guys, but basically I'll press this button and listen to this. Hear those clicks? Oh my gosh, this is so good. Here is a color version of the schematic, the wiring schematic. I've been working from this black and white one, which is Fine for now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to start figuring out which wires are which. I've also highlighted blue here, the wires that are gonna be running from the back to the front of the van, which I'm gonna put in a bundle now and thread through underneath. So I'm gonna measure those out. And there is a lot of work still to do. We have a major problem. We fled the brakes last night, and as I was testing the pedal, the master cylinder, which is like where the brake fluid is and it feeds the brakes, started leaking, which is basically we can't use the brakes.